previously on Advanced Stylized Material. If you haven't watched the first part of this overview, I really, really encourage you to do so as we are gonna be using features I explained in the previous video. But for this demonstration, I picked two example meshes. This beautiful PBR lever armchair from, you know, the detective office pack and a Megascan or soon to be fab traffic cone 3D model. The core concept, however, is to show you that you can take default PBR textures like, you know, albedo or normal map and use them to create stylized version of assets. All right, so here I get almost the same setup as last time. I'm gonna be using a simple scene with basic lighting, a post-process volume with locked exposure, an outline material, and a colored background. But here I'm using my background creator blueprint to get this nice pattern. All right, so let me show you how I set up a material instance for this armchair. This time I'm gonna need a color map. And as you can see, once I enable this feature, I no longer have access to procedural gradient, which kind of makes sense since we are using color values from a texture, right? And typically you will find that texture in a PBR material instance assigned to the original mesh. In my case, it's called albedo, but you may also see names like diffuse, color or base color, depending on how the author named that. And while we are here, let's also grab other textures you might need for the stylized shader. Also, it's a good idea to make a copy of these textures since we are going to apply some in-editor adjustments. Now, creating a stylized version will require you to make some choices, depending on your art direction or even memory budget. And one of those choices is deciding how much detail you want to keep in your textures. You probably have like 2K, 4K or even 8K resolution that you might not need for this stylized material. But let me show you what I mean. In my example, I dropped the resolution from 4K to 512 by 512 and changed the MIPGEN settings to blur. You can also try the sharpen option to enhance surface details and give it more of a like, you know, borderland style, but as I said, it's totally up to your artistic vision. I prefer it a bit blurred, so let me revert the settings I had before. You can also export the texture and apply more advanced blurring or sharpening in a third-party software such as Photoshop or, like in my case, Affinity Photo. Alright, the same logic applies to the normal map. I changed the LOD bias and blurred it a bit, so I'm using only a 1K resolution. But now check out how it appeared with the texture at full resolution. See those tiny leather details in the normal map? I mean, if that works better for you, that's totally fine, but I'm gonna use the blurred version so the surface appears a bit flat or smooth. Okay, so um, now let me disable all the effects so we can see what each one actually does to the material. So detail layer, fake reflection, fake directional light, rim light, and fake outline all off. And I think I'll even hide the outlines too, leaving just the pure color map. And let's start by reintroducing the fake directional light as it emphasizes the you know, three-dimensional form of the object uh, by making its overall silhouette rounded surfaces and edges more visible. And while we're here, you can see that I'm using a mask that I extracted from the RMA texture I grabbed earlier. It's just a simple black and white ambient occlusion bake. You can use any texture, but I think AO works well in this case. And the reason why I'm using this mask is it allows me to precisely control the effect in specific areas where I want it to or don't want it to be. But I won't go into too much detail since that will be covered in the third part of the overview. For now though, just know that you can use those masks like this. All right, so um, let's enable the rim light now. And I can already tell I want to lock it. So it always highlights this armrest, no matter how the object is rotated. I increase the bias significantly to make the rim light cover only a small area of the chair, something like, like this. 
So for the detail layer, I'm not going to be using the default triplanar mapping and use object UVs instead, since we're going to be using the same AO mask as before. So now when I increase the layer intensity, you can see the crevices where the buttons are get a bit darker. And here I'm also using a custom color, but you can use the default black one as well. And yeah, we are left with the fake outline, which I usually enable anyway, and the fake reflection. However, for this particular object, I don't think the reflection works well. I mean, it still looks okay, but I'm not sure if I want the leather to have any reflections at all. Maybe a smooth pattern would be a better option here, but I don't know, I decided to leave it off. Yeah, not all effects work well with every asset, so there is no need to use them if they just don't fit. Alright, there you have it, your stylized armchair material. And let's compare it with the original again. Yep, I think it turned out pretty cool. The workflow with Quixel assets is pretty much the same. Uh, you know what, let me disable the fake shadow for now. Anyway, I picked this traffic con from the library and uh, by the way, I recommend choosing the medium quality as the high res or nanite version can be, you know, unnecessarily heavy in most cases. And once you've downloaded the asset, navigate to the folder and you can start adjusting the textures, you know, just like we did with the armchair. And then it only took me about 12 seconds to set up all other parameters. So yeah, you know the drill. But the reason I chose this asset is to show that you can actually skip the normal map and use a much smaller pattern like, like the one I've included with the pack. And with this normal map, I think the effect looks almost the same. And additionally, you can, you know, choose the mapping method either to stick with the objectives or switch back to Triplanner for more control. All right, but why stop here? Do we really even need a color map? So let's take a step back and think about it. We've got a really simple object with only two or three colors. And is it possible to achieve the same result without extra textures? Well, I'm sure you already know the answer. This traffic cone on the right is fully procedural using exactly the same mesh and a stripe mask. Sure, the one on the left has some nice dirt or other imperfections, but maybe that's not your priority. And I think it does a pretty good job as a background prop. What I'm trying to say here is there are many ways to get the look that you want, with or without textures, you know, just thinking outside the box. And for me, this kind of procedural workflow is not only fun, but also highly effective. It's like, why would you want to download multiple meshes or textures and bloat your project size when you can easily create multiple variations in just seconds? Alright guys, that's it for this part. Thanks for watching.